I think for most actors playing drunk, you would approach it a little like we do in real life. If you come home from the pub and you don't want your, your wife to know that you've been having a couple of pints, <laughs> that means you're hiding it. So, so, the, uh, so the slightly drunk version is always hide it, hide it. And that obviously gives you away because you move a little more restrained, a little more precise, too precise actually. <laughs> uh, so those, those are like the, should we say the easy ways of playing drunk, but then when you get up to the higher levels, this is where the danger starts. This is why it gives you away if you're not, if you're not nailing it, it's just mm -hmm. so obvious. Hi, I'm Maria Canterbury and welcome to the BAFTA Film Sessions, Leading Actor. This virtual series celebrates the nominees from this year's EE British Academy Film Awards. We are joined this evening by Riz Ahmed, Adash Gaurav, Mads Mikkelsen and Zaha Rahim. Also nominated this year are Chadwick Boseman for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and Anthony Hopkins for The Father. Welcome all of you and congratulations on your nomination this year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I want to start um, for a question for all of you. Um, the very notion of film as a biography, perhaps on your own lives, the idea that you spend so much time in the preparation for a role and the production of a role in the press and promotion um, of the films that you've worked on. What was it in particular about each of these roles that you're nominated for um, that drew you to this in particular to kind of give up kind of so much of your life to put into these specific roles? Uh, first of all, it's Kevin. I worked with him 10 years ago and uh, we stayed good friends. And uh, he sent me a text saying, I might have a nice part for you. So uh, when I received the script, I, you know, the title at that time was Guantanamo Diary. So uh, uh, for a second, for a very short moment, I thought it would be, maybe there was, you know, endless stereotypical parts you can get, you know, from Hollywood or Europe. And, uh, and I know Kevin, I know he's clever. So uh, I'm like, come on, it's you. So I read the script and uh, just technically the part is a real gift for an actor. But while I was reading it, I felt so many different feelings inside of myself. I was angry, sad, and absolutely blown away by uh, Mohamedou because it's mm. a true story. So when I, I cried, well, which is very rare for an actor when you read a script to cry. It never happened to me before. And when I when I finished the script, I, I just called Kevin and I said, man, uh, I'm in. I, I really wanted to be part of these people who are doing him justice. And Adash, kind of the White Tiger, obviously um, internationally best-selling novel, winning the Man Booker Prize. But um, there's a little bit of legacy already to take on kind of you know, a role that so many people have pictured in their own heads when they've been reading it. But what was it kind of in the, in the initial readings of the script that kind of you were kind of desperate to take it on? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Maria. It's, it's an honor for me to be sharing this table with such esteemed gentlemen. Um, I think, uh, you know, Tess Joseph, who is the casting director of the film, She's one of only two casting directors from India uh, at present who cast for international films. And uh, <clears throat> I got a call from her from her office saying that, um, you know, there's a film that they're casting for. And at that point in time, they hadn't revealed the name of the film. They just sent me a couple of scenes. And um, I was actually just very, very excited to be receiving a call from Tessa's office because it was the first time that I was getting an opportunity to audition with her. And I've secretly always harbored the desire to work internationally, but some, you know, somehow it never came together. So when I got this opportunity, I said, you know, um, I'd take it with both hands. So when I read the scene, even though it wasn't mentioned that it was the white tiger, I knew it was the white tiger because I'd read it as a teenager, I'd read the book. So when Balram's name was mentioned there, I said, aha, this is the white tiger. So film is being made on it. <laughs> and um, I read the scenes and I went to audition for it. And I swear when I went to audition, the only thought in my head was that I need to give a good enough audition so that I get called for another audition from Tess. Because even the thought of entertaining, the thought of entertaining the fact that I could ever get to play Balram just seems so bizarre because I felt that this is such a big film and, uh, you know, that somebody like me is never going to get cast for this. So one thing led to the next and then five rounds later and a month later, Ramin called me from New York and said that, you know, um, they want me to play Balram and it was... It was just unbelievable for me. But 
I guess one of the most attractive parts about the film was, of course, um, the story in itself. It's such an extraordinary story of of a man from the darkness to the light, and um, you know the kind of changes that he witnesses on the way, and the kind of people that he meets. And um, I guess it was just an opportunity for me to embody uh, a person that I that I hadn't played before, and it was something that was very far from who I am. and it gave me that chance to really explore myself as an as an actor um by being balram so and of course the opportunity to work with somebody like ramin who i've been a big fan of you know uh, i i'd watched man pushcart and goodbye solo and when i got to know he was directing the film i was just very very excited um and mad um an uh, another round of if you've worked with thomas winterberg before but i suppose what bar uh, with adash sorry mentioned and kind of going in from the darkness to the light kind of martin is in a way kind of going from a fog to some sort of light kind of in in this social mm. would you call it a social experiment that um that you're carrying out what was it kind of initially that drew you to the role well i think it's a mix of what the uh, uh tahas said and mm. and riz uh, thomas was the uh, uh, the main reason because we worked together as you said seven eight odd years ago and i really wanted to work with him again um and, and so he pitched me the story about these um four high school teachers uh, whose lives has come to a standstill and they try to you know recharge their the the batteries through uh, drinking a little but only while mm-hmm. they're working um and that sounded fun and great so i said yes right away uh mm-hmm. but i also knew that the story would be so much more about uh, life and thomas has an ability to place ordinary people in extraordinary situations so we can relate to them and uh, and it didn't disappoint me the script was absolutely beautiful so so those were the two reasons why i said yes and and then a few days before i started shooting a disaster hit thomas and his family and and so it became uh not only a, a film i wanted to do it became a necessity it became the most important thing i've ever done in my life and um and it turned out luckily into something that we're all proud of yeah it's turned out turned out to be a beautiful film um i wanted to talk to all of you but i sort of stick with you at the moment mark on kind of the idea of process um i the as an actor um i wouldn't know but i imagine the kind of performing drunk while trying to be sober is quite a difficult feat in itself and kind of and also the kind of ensemble piece of all four of you doing that together um how yeah. did you all work with thomas to kind of create the kind of an illusion that obviously seems very authentic was well, a lot there's a lot of different stages in that yeah. you know um, i think for most actors playing drunk uh, you would approach it a little like we do in real life if you come home from the pub and you don't want your your wife to know that you've been having a couple of pints mm-hmm. that means you're hiding it So so the uh, so the slightly drunk version is always hide it hide it and that obviously gives you away because you move a little more restrained a little more precise too precise action uh, so those those are like the should we say the easy ways of playing drunk but then when you get up to the higher levels this is where the danger starts this is why it gives you away if you're not if you're not nailing it it's just mm-hmm. so obvious so what we did we did a we did a boot camp before we started mm-hmm. shooting and we tested out all the the exact levels of of you know 05 08 <laughs> 01 um and we tested out some of the scenes and we filmed the whole thing and we had a great time so so if you're sitting four guys knowing each other well and you had a few few shots maybe four it doesn't seem that odd it's kind of like it's it's this it's normal but when you see the video the next day it gets you away <laughs> all of a sudden your hands are doing stuff that you didn't tell them to do and that little lesp you had 40 years ago it's back um so that was coming in really handy and for the complete hammered stuff we watched a lot of youtube videos for some reason it's all this russian people who film themselves when they're drinking a lot yeah. and <laughs> and for that we were just we 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 didn't test it out we just watched it and and got inspired but so we could turn up and down on the volume uh, uh, and and that was that was coming in handy because obviously we couldn't drink shooting because there's a tendency if you drink too much there is no dialogue anymore. No. No Maya, I'm imagining drinking for 12 hours straight on a set is probably not going to be very productive on <laughs> why. And, and 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 for 60 days straight no. Yeah. No. Um also as kind of obviously you've done very many English speaking roles. 
um, and obviously a lot of Danish roles. Is there, um, do you notice a difference in yourself as an actor kind of with, with between languages? Is there yeah. a kind of, a, uh, how, yeah. Yeah, what? yeah it's, it's hard to put my finger on it now. I think that first few times I did it, it was obviously a, an extra character. It was me speaking English. Mm -hmm. I had to get used to how I would do that as a person. So that was the first act character. And then secondly, the real character. The more I've done it, the more I can focus on the character, which is the important part, of course. But, but I've done quite a few different languages in my career. And it's always the case that you have to get past that part so you can get to the real character, right? Mm -hmm. um, I always say it might be an excuse. I don't mind people having an accent. I, I, I find it hard when people put on an accent and we notice it too long. So just have one, that's my excuse, uh, and then and get past it.